One of the more common questions when people are picking up saddle hunting is what kind of pack to get. And so for today's video, I basically just wanted to kind of go over a whole bunch of different styles of packs, stuff that I've hunted with, stuff that I've used for a long time, stuff that I just bought this year, and kind of give my opinions on what type of pack might work best for your particular scenario. Because there's not always just a one size fits all. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is, do you even need a pack? One of the draws about saddle hunting, of course, is that it's a very minimal style and you're ditching the extra weight, the extra bulk of a tree stand, of a pack potentially. So if you take a look at these two saddles, I got an arrow hunter in this hand, I got tethered in this hand. We've got these little sis hauler pouches. These type of pouches will fit with the molly webbing that you have around the waistband. So this pouch can go on either one of these saddles. It's not something that's gonna make a difference depending on what brand you choose. But the benefit of having pouches like this is you can carry some extra gear. Just some of your essentials like ropes, headlamps, knife, just small stuff that you might need on a particular hunt. And so one of the things you gotta ask yourself is, if I'm going to go minimalist, what exactly would I be carrying in a pack? If it's all just small stuff like that, you might not need a pack. Of course, you gotta carry your climbing method. And one of the ways you can carry something like this, climbing sticks, without a pack would be to use, if I can find it here, a band that's kind of like this duffel bag strap or like a rifle sling or anything like that, you can fit something like this around your sticks and then you can sling them over your shoulder and carry them that way. So that's one way to carry sticks without a pack. If you've got something like Wild Edge Steps, of course, they have their own carry bag. You can sling this over your shoulder when you walk in. You definitely don't absolutely need a pack, but if you're carrying filming gear or if it's a little bit colder and you gotta carry extra clothes, a lot of times you're gonna wanna carry a pack anyway. So. Let's go from kind of more minimalist to more heavy duty. So this is an REI Flash 18, and this pack is gonna kind of represent the ultralight minimalist packs. You look at this pack, everything about it is made out of lightweight materials. There's really no structure to it at all, right? So this isn't gonna carry medium loads very well. It's not gonna carry heavy loads really at all. It's made for carrying light loads. The lighter duty the pack, the more it's made for carrying those lighter loads. So something like this will do just fine at carrying, you know, an extra layer for your upper body. It's going to carry some, a small amount of camera gear and probably water, food, that type of thing. But you're not going to want to carry really much more than that. Even like climbing sticks, this wouldn't be the best thing to really use for those. But if that's your style, if that's all the stuff you really need to carry and you don't mind carrying your climbing method over your shoulder, Something like this could still be nice. It's a lot cheaper than some of the other packs I'm gonna go over, which is a huge plus. And of course it has hardly any bulk, so once you got this thing up in the tree, it's really not gonna impact your ability to sort of use the saddle to get around and use 360 degrees of mobility. Now let's take a step up from that. This pack here, if you guys watch the Public Land Challenge, this is the pack I was using. It's the Cabela's Elite Scout 1800 pack. And basically this pack is kind of like a stepping stone pack between an ultralight or a minimalist pack and something that's a little bit beefier like a frame pack. Now this thing is a little bit more rigid. You can see this does have somewhat of a frame in it. I can only get a little bit of flex when I try and flex this thing. Open up the pack, there's ample space inside, 1800 cubic inches exactly. And this will allow you to carry a little bit more clothing. This has no problem carrying all of my camera gear. And with a pack like this, one thing I can do is I can take like my platform, which I'll just grab that real quick. I can put a platform in one of these outer compartments and then I can put my climbing sticks actually right over the top like this. And this is how I would often carry my stuff in. I'd have my camera gear, any additional clothes inside the pack, platform in that extra kind of compartment on the outside sticks over the top and then I would attach these sticks to the pack with night eyes gear ties. Now there are other packs that kind of fit this bill. This pack is about about a hundred dollars if I remember correctly. So it's definitely not breaking the bank but again it's going to be a lot more expensive than some of your more minimalist packs. The packs don't have kind of that nice robust frame but I'll tell you what a pack like this is going to do a lot better job at carrying those medium weight loads like the 20 to 30 pound loads 
you're really not going to feel that weight as much as if you're using a minimalist pack that didn't have beefier shoulder straps, didn't have a hip belt, and didn't have a more rigid frame. On some of those early season trips with that camera gear and clothing, I'm carrying oftentimes around 25 to 30 total pounds. And this thing carries it no problem. You can see that you do have a little bit of extra airflow in here, so your back doesn't get totally sweaty when it's really hot. So there's definitely some things that I really liked about this pack. One of the downsides when you take a step up from the more minimalist pack to get something with a little bit bigger of a frame is once you stick this thing up in the tree, if you bring that pack up with you, now it's taken up a little bit more space. So you got to lean out a little bit further to see around the pack. And to some people that might be an issue, others maybe not. But it is something to keep in mind. Now one thing you can't do with this pack, because the frame isn't rigid enough, is you can't really carry heavy loads. Medium loads, sure. But once you get above, you know, like 40 pounds, you're better off with an actual frame pack. So now I'm gonna take the step up and we'll look at two frame packs that I got here. Both of these I bought from Mystery Ranch this year. And both of these packs from Mystery Ranch are kind of unique between one another. They're both kind of billed as day packs, but very different construction. So this first one is a Mystery Ranch Pop-Up 18. They also make a Pop-Up 28. That Pop-Up 28 is gonna be more similar in overall size compartment wise to that Cabela's pack that I had. This 18 is much smaller, only 18 liters as opposed to 28. But one of the things you can do with this pack is you can actually, you can expand this out from more of a day pack mode into more of a actual load hauler. Not gonna be as robust as a true frame pack, full size load hauler, but very capable. Mystery Ranch says that loads around 75 pounds or so are going to be realistic with a pack like this. And for some of you guys, you're thinking, well, why on earth would I want to carry 75 pounds? Well, a pack like this is going to allow you to quarter out a deer and be able to carry it out. So if you're only carrying in a pack this size worth of stuff, but you also want to have the capability to not have to drag a deer out to actually quarter it up and haul it out, then this is going to be a decent option. A pack like this with a frame, a rigid frame, this frame is going to be even more rigid than that Cabela's pack, properly adjusted with the hip belt, with the shoulder straps, especially with the load lifters, it's going to make a world of difference when you get from those moderately heavy loads and even into some of the, the very heavy loads makes a huge, huge difference in how that weight is able to be transferred onto your hips. When you tighten down your shoulder straps, you tighten down your hip belt, essentially you're gonna be able to get some of that load on your hips just like that. But then if you were to just loosen up the shoulder straps to take some of the load off of the, the shoulders, what tends to happen is the pack starts to lean back away from your body and kind of pulls you backwards. But with the load lifters, you're able to tighten those things down and bring that weight more centered over your center of gravity again. So it's kind of hard to explain. It's a lot easier to feel when you have a frame pack, but it does make a really big difference. This particular pack, it, Mystery Ranch is the only one that really has a pack like this. The next pack I go over, there's gonna be a lot of options from a lot of different brands, but this one is kind of unique. There's not a whole lot of other companies doing this pop-up style of frame. It might actually even be patented by Mystery Ranch. They might be the only ones who can do it. But this thing's got a pouch in the top, main compartment, and then a front compartment. So if you do have this thing up in the tree with you, you do have a little bit more options in terms of where you can put your stuff. So you can have camera batteries in one of these pouches. You can have, you know, like pruning shears or something else in the top pocket. So you don't have to always just have one big open pouch where everything can get mixed up. All right, step up from that. Now we got a true Western frame. Now, why would you want to use a heavy Western frame like this, which this pack is over five pounds, just bare pack, right? So if you're trying to look at your overall gear list weight and you're thinking, how can I make my overall pack weight lighter? Going with a heavier pack seems very counterintuitive, but for heavy loads, this thing makes a big difference. It's gonna be, it's gonna carry heavy loads if you're packing out a deer, much easier to carry than, well, I should say a little bit easier to carry than the pop-up. And it's gonna be, way better than the other pack options, which don't really even allow you to pack out a deer at all. I'd say a pack like this is totally overkill if you don't plan on packing out your deer. 
you're going to be much better off with a cheaper pack like the Cabela's one or anything that's kind of that similar, has a semi-rigid frame or even a minimalist pack. But if you want to have that ability to pack out a deer and especially if you want to have a crossover pack, say you do whitetail hunting but you also do western hunting, which I'm kind of in that boat. So this pack, this is the, called the Pintler, just like that pop-up, this one has the ability to expand and have a extra load shelf that you can carry that weight in. So with this pack, if I do want to take it out west, because this amount of space isn't going to be suitable for like seven, eight day trips, you can expand that load shelf, drop in like an extra 40 liter dry bag with all of your camp stuff, and then you can make it work. So for whitetails, what I could see a pack like this being more for is, let's say you got your saddle, you got your extra pouches where you got your necessities, really the only thing you need to actually hunt up in the tree is in your pouches or in your pockets and your jacket. The only thing you'd really want to be using this thing for is carrying in like say your sticks, right? So you get to the tree, you take your sticks off the pack, you can leave that pack at the base of the tree. And carrying sticks on a pack like that, even though the pack itself weighs five pounds, you're not even going to notice it, right? It's going to maybe in warm weather make your back sweat a little bit more just because there's so much area on your back that's being covered and not quite as breathable as say like an ultralight pack. Price-wise, your lighter, kind of non-supportive packs are generally going to be the cheapest. Then packs like this are going to be kind of the next step up in price. Like I said, this one was it's like $100 or $120, something like that. This pop-up pack was in the range of around $300. I got a black Ova steel on this one. So this one ended up being like, I want to say 15% off that I bought this one for. Oh, and by the way, I just attached this... Uh, little first aid kit to the bottom that didn't come with the pack. That pack's around five pounds too, a little bit lighter, maybe like four and a half. This pack here is closer to 500 bucks. I got it 30% off with Black Friday deals. Um, so there's definitely some options there in terms of getting it cheaper, but comparable packs to something like this, a, kind of a true Western day pack style of pack, you're gonna be looking in the range of like, on the low end, like 300 bucks, to on the high end, like six or 700 for a really you know, like a Kafaru or a Stone Glacier or something like that. So this pack, definitely on the high end. Something like this, definitely on the low end. And if you don't need a pack, of course, going to be your cheapest option overall. And I do have one more thing to show you guys. There's going to be some more information, I think, about this over the next, you know, several months to a year. But this pack, I know some of you guys noticed that I was wearing this in Missouri. This is a JX3 hybrid. It was kind of like a cross between hunting out of a saddle and hunting out of a tree stand. There's some things I really like about it, but basically if you're hunting out of this, you have a frame that you basically wear on your back. And I've modified this since I've actually gotten it for the first time. So all the stuff you see here isn't necessarily what it comes with, but you get up into the tree, you have a bridge that goes over just like if you were wearing a saddle and then you're able to sit on this nice, nice flat area here. So it's kind of like sitting in a lawn chair up in the tree. You got a fork just like with the old Guido's web, but basically with a pack like this, or I should say a hunting system like this, it's built off of kind of a molly frame. So you'll notice right here, I have some game bags attached kind of with the expectation that if I were to shoot something hunting out of this pack, I'd have the ability to then pack out that, that deer. I have put a hundred pounds of rock salt in the back of this thing. Um, it's not, overly comfortable but then again even on a pack like that 100 pounds isn't overly comfortable but the thing was it could carry it so again options and maybe the best way to think about this kind of stuff is to look at it in kind of like a flow chart like we're trying to figure out what kind of pack you want to buy i would suggest saying number one do you need a pack and that's going to be based totally on how much stuff you want to take in the woods going to be based on are you hunting in a colder climate where you're going to need additional clothes often is it going to be a warmer climate where oftentimes you're going to not be packing in that extra clothes you don't have the need for extra stuff are you carrying in camera gear right these are all things that can impact do you need a pack at all obviously if you don't need a pack then you're really kind of getting back to the true style of being minimalist with a saddle hunting type of setup let's say you do need a pack then the question becomes what are you going to use that pack to carry? Do you have something like 
maybe like wild edge steps or silent approach steps where you just got that over like a shoulder sling and you just got a couple extra items, maybe a pack like this is gonna be the way to go. Are you gonna be carrying climbing sticks? If you are, then I would immediately suggest bumping up to something like this with a semi-rigid frame because this is gonna carry your climbing sticks quite well. Are you going to at any time want to pack out deer? If that's the case, then I would definitely go with one of the frame pack options, be it the pop-up or a standard style frame or like a JX3 hybrid. Now, how do you choose between those three? Well, I would say if you want to use like the JX3 as your hunting system in addition to kind of your pack, then obviously you go with something like that. If you want to use it primarily for whitetail hunting and you don't really go out west much, I'd recommend something like a pop-up. Because this thing, if you remember back in the day pack mode, took up a lot less space and if you bring this thing up in the tree with you if you have like camera gear or something it's not going to take as much profile up in the tree as a bigger frame pack would if you're going to be hunting out west in addition to hunting deer and you want to potentially be able to use the same pack for both then i definitely recommend going with kind of more of a true western frame now there are some things that of course aren't the, the best about a pack like this right the Cordura fabric is going to be a little bit noisier, but if you kind of use it like I was talking about earlier, where maybe you're just using it to get your sticks and real basic necessities, extra clothes to the tree, leave it on the ground, then you're not taking up any profile in the tree itself, but you still have the ability once you get back down of packing out a deer. So as you can see, lots of different options and there might be some other people that have different opinions. That's totally fine. If you guys have examples of specific packs that you use and really like, go ahead and drop them down in the comments. I'd like to read them and I'm sure that the viewers as well who have questions would definitely benefit from hearing opinions from people other than just myself, right? The more, more knowledge and more opinions, more experience you can kind of learn from, the better in my opinion. So anyways, I hope this was helpful. Um, based on, I guess, my particular style, I will either go with probably this uh, Mystery Ranch Pintler next year for whitetails, because this is something I'm also gonna use for out west, or I may use this pop-up pack. The pop-up was uh, a pack that I was originally gonna get the 28 in, but when I wanted to buy it, they were out of stock absolutely everywhere, but I was still able to get the 18. And I found that the 18 was still able to fit the amount of minimalist pieces of gear that I'm gonna bring in with me on a typical hunt. And if I was carrying in additional clothes, they would go in the load shelf. One thing that I've been trying to do is see if there's a way to get away from using a camera arm with a camcorder. It's not set in stone yet. I'm playing around with different things, gimbals mounted on the bow. And anyways, if I continue to use the same fourth arrow arm that I have been using this year with the camcorder and all that kind of stuff, most likely I'll use this pack because having this thing up in the tree with me gives me a very good layout, easy to take things out of this thing, easy to store my batteries in one pouch, other necessities in another pouch. And I really like the way that it lays things out more so than having this thing up in the tree. If I wanted to use this, I wouldn't want to have it up in the tree with me. I would more likely just leave it on the ground, carry my additional necessities that I need to be up in the tree, up in additional pouches like this that are stored on the saddle itself. And then for probably my all day sits, late season stuff, I might go back to the J3 hybrid. These are all just kind of initial thoughts at this point. I might change between now and then, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking right now. Anyways, yeah, I hope this video was, was helpful for you guys. If you have any additional questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.